Hello everyone, welcome to the next video in AZ500 series and as per the screen, you already know what we're going to talk about today. Uh, this is the Azure AD part because we know identity centric security we need in cloud, right? And uh, today we are going to talk about Azure AD objects. We know the primary use case of Azure AD is to manage secure authenticated access to an organization's uh, Microsoft Cloud services and applications that support modern authentication protocol, regardless of where they are hosted. We talked about this in the previous video. There was our first video. This is second. And today we are going to talk about Azure AD objects. And these are the objects that we're going to talk about as per the syllabus, users, groups, roles, and service principle. Now, for users to be able to access services which are protected by Azure AD, they need what? They need their account, user account. There are two main types of user account in Azure AD, internal and external. Let me go back to a uh, next slide. Right, we have internal user and we do have external users. As you can see, internal user has Azure AD user, which we are creating inside the portal. And then we have on-premises user, which is coming through synchronizing, as you can see on-premises AD user getting synced. We'll talk about hybrid identity in upcoming video, but for now, we this is a user coming from on-premises through synchronization of identities. Then we have MS user. In external user, we have a Microsoft user or external Azure AD user, Microsoft like Hotmail, right? <clears throat> Now, there is there is uh, th this the difference between internal user and external user is UPN format. Okay, uh, UPN format of internal user is like uh, username at domain dot suffix. For example, if uh, we have created a username uh, ABC in Azure AD tenant uh, that has a custom primary domain name, for example, azure.com. The user will have a UPN of abc at azure.com, simple. But in external uh, user accounts, it would be, because it's coming from a different Azure tenant, right? So it would be abc underscore the home tenant from where it is coming. Then there would be a uh, mention of ext as external at domain.suffix. Or you can see easily on the on the portal, I'll show you. So uh, this is this is uh, about users. And then we have uh, groups. That's what we uh, showed in the first slide. So let's go to the groups. Now, Azure AD groups is exactly the same like any other group in any other identity system for the same function to ease or revoke the permission assignment. Because if you're doing per user basis, it would be hectic and uh, error oriented thing but if you have all the users in a group and you're applying permission at one place it will ease your work and less chances of error and if that person no more in that group he doesn't have that permission all right then azure ad groups are of like two types security groups and ms365 groups all right, so security groups, which are primarily used to manage access to shared resources. And Microsoft 365 groups let you choose a set of people that you wish to collaborate. It's for collaboration. 
uh, when we create groups in Azure AD, we need to specify how members will be assigned to the group assignment. It can be direct assignment, like manually you are adding to a particular group, or it could be dynamic assignment. Means you have created a membership rule on the basis of attribute. For example, all the all the users which belongs to USA, or all the users who has uh, a project management in the title, things like that. So it will run the query and dynamically those users will come into this group. But it this because it is required. It it is it seems it is an advanced feature and uh, query is running. So of course it need uh, P1 licenses. If you have P1 licenses, you can utilize dynamic membership. And it can be either for devices or users, but not for both, like in a, in a single group. It is also important to note that groups can have owners and the owners do not have to be a member of the group. Group owners are able to manage the group and its membership. That's a wonderful feature. All right, now we have next slide where we're going to talk about Azure AD and Azure RBAC roles. Now, the term role describes a collection of permissions, okay? A permission describes an action that can be performed on a resource such as read, write, and delete. We can examine the permissions under our role to see what it allows us to do. If we go to the Azure uh, portal, we see it would be there and under JSON, JSON format and there are different ways to see that as well. A key point to note is that Azure resources deployed in, in subscription and Azure AD has separate permission system. It's more like control plane and data plane, management plane and data plane, let's put it this way. Management plane for Azure AD and data is all the resources that are running. This means that the roles used to grant access to Azure AD are different from the roles used to grant access to Azure resources. We'll see that in our uh, practical lab section. Azure AD roles are used to manage access to Azure AD while Azure role best access control roles are used to manage access to Azure resources. You can see that here, right? Azure are back for the subscription, the resource group here, like owner, contributor, and reader. But Azure AD is for Azure AD uh, roles. Global admin, user admin, these are the Azure AD roles for the Azure AD users. All right. <clears throat> but both Azure AD uh, and Azure resources have built-in roles, but you can also have a customized one, okay? If you have sufficient permission, you can you can customize it as well. Now, this is the last object of Azure AD, which is service principle. It is not only user that need to authenticate to Azure AD to access resources, applications may also need to authenticate to Azure AD. But how does Azure AD identify an application that cannot be, that cannot, that cannot perform an interactive sign-in. It does this using a special identity called service principle. It is just like we create user, we, we, we register the application and then we have client ID and secret or certificate for this application that we can add in the application code to uh, authenticate. We'll see that in the lab as well, right? So these all are the objects of Azure AD which is needed for AZ500. So if we go here, this is the portal. If we go here, click on Azure AD under users, we can create new user from here, just like that, right? Or we can invite a user, that would be external one. We can create a user. I don't have Azure AD Connect, so I, I cannot show you the sync one, but in the hybrid identity, we'll definitely talk about it. Okay, then go back to the identity. Here we have groups and we can create the groups from here. And in the groups, we know there are like two types, security and 365, access for the resources, collaboration, and we have membership type assigned, why it's grayed out because I do not have P1. 
another one was dynamic rule based on attributes then we talked about azure ad roles right here we have so many roles here that you can uh, assign to somebody from here assignment add assignment but here you have all the users in azure ad you can assign these are the Azure AD roles. How about Azure RBAC? Then you need to go to Azure subscriptions or Azure resource, which is running inside the subscription. Subscription, For example, this VM. And if you click here under the IAM, you have this Azure RBAC. You can assign it from here. And the last object was uh, under roles, you have all the built-in roles that you can assign. Okay. Now, the last object, uh, AD object that we talked about was the service principle app registration. It was there on the slide, right? You register the app, provide the name, register it. It will come here. And once you click here, you would have like client ID uh, belongs to this tenant ID. And here we have certificate and secrets that could be utilized for this. This one is expired, of course. Uh, so yeah. This is all about Azure AD objects and I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. Well, thank you for watching. You have a nice day.